PC has won the console war, at least according to the guy behind Alienware PCs. Frank as a <laughs> You do that again without me being a dick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see which one's the best. Gareth not being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Azor told GameSpot at PAX Australia earlier this week that the fact that the PS4 and Xbox One are having to evolve mid-generation shows that the consoles just can't keep up anymore. He said, Console architecture is, funnily enough, more PC-like than ever before. So I think that's a real testament that PC has won. Azor pointed out that the amount of innovation in the games industry, like HDR, 4K and VR, mean consoles simply can't operate on seven-year cadences anymore. He went on to say Alienware aren't actively trying to compete with consoles, but are instead positioning themselves as complementary devices. Whatever that means. That, yeah, exactly. That last bit probably sounds a little bit like it's good. You know, he's backtracking a little bit there, but he does kind of have a point because we are both in that situation. We have a PC and a PS4, and it's kind of a good combo, to be honest. Yeah, a little bit better than having an Xbox One and PC, if you think about it, because the exclusive games on Xbox One usually come to PC, yeah, so you miss, you're missing out on the exclusive PS4 one, so... So PC gaming might be starting to make a bit more sense now that a £350 console just doesn't last you three years before you know, you're being asked to upgrade again. But crucially, if PC gaming is ever going to actually win the console war in any way, it needs to conquer the living room, and it needs to do that in a big way. Valve are doing their best with things like Steam Machines, the Steam Controller and the Steam Link, but it's still nowhere near the level of dominance and prominence that Sony and Microsoft are enjoying at the moment. Yeah, I've actually got a Steam Link myself and it's it's really good, I've got to be honest, it's like, it just streams over your Wi-Fi or your, you know, your network at home, so you basically get PC gaming. On your TV? On the, yeah, big kind of uh, living room TV. It, it does seem like the consoles and the PC are trying to evolve in the same yeah. direction. But that's just kind of the point that this guy was making, is that they are becoming a lot more similar to each other. They're just taking different elements, and each one is just becoming a lot more similar to the other one. But it is worth noting that Alienware PCs are obscenely expensive. An Alienware system can easily be matched performance-wise by building a PC yourself for a fraction of the cost, or even by custom ordering a PC the exact spec that you want. Alienware costs a f bomb look at this two thousand pound machine why because it's a funny shape and has some nice lights on it F that well they are some nice lights dude <laughs> some pretty nice lights. oh my god really PC may have won the console war if, in fact, they were part of the war to begin with. But let's get this straight. Alienware have done fuck all to help. So, what do you guys think of this? Is the likes of PS4 Pro and the Xbox One Scorpio proof that PC gaming is winning in some way? Or is this guy just talking out of his alien wass? That alien doesn't even ass. really sound right, but when alien you write ass. alien wass out, it's perfect because <laughs> you just drop a little S in there. Yeah, yeah it's funnier in writing. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, are you tired of constantly having to change your underwear when you're playing horror games? Oh boy, I know I sure am. Well then, you're in luck, because there's a Kickstarter for that. Yeah, that's right. The people who made survival horror game Outlast have launched a Kickstarter campaign to create companion diapers for this upcoming Outlast 2 game. This is the actual developers of the yeah, game? Man, they're the actual d people who are making the game trying to sell you some diapers as well. well. It's like a Kickstarter campaign, I guess it's just kind of a laugh, but... You know, <laughs> maybe they're trying to fund the game or something. Maybe like you know, they're going to have money for the game. Like, I doubt that because Outlast did actually really yeah. well. The underscares, as they're called, are genuine adult protective garments that fans can purchase, beginning at fifty-five Canadian dollars, so just over thirty quid or forty dollars American real dollars. That actually comes with a game as well, so you're getting some nice diapers and a game. Now the company insists this is a hundred percent real physical product. The Kickstarter has raised almost $14,000 Canadian, uh, that's of his $40,000 goal, at the time of recording with 14 days left to go. The page reads, you shat, we listened. <laughs> Introducing Underscares, the Outlast 2 companion diaper, because when you're scared, number two can become problem number one. There's also this gem, the science is simple, if you're scared enough, you'll poop. And underscares are wearable, comfortable, high quality, and most importantly, washable. Yeah, so the page is full of 
great quotes to be fair definitely worth a look there'll be a link in the description kudos to the developers man yeah. coming out with this whoever came out with this is, is great Very great good. advertising well done in other news Ubisoft has hinted it may be about to change the way it handles DLC and to be honest the changes sound pretty damn good Ubi said the model used in Rainbow Six Siege where all the game content is offered for free while paid DLC is limited to customization, is likely to be used on all of its titles Ubisoft Vice President of Live Operations Anne Blondal Joan told Games Industry if I take an analogy of an amusement park, you can go through all its rides, but then you can also go to the shop and buy some food or merchandise. Honestly, this is music to our ears, to be honest, because DLC, it just sucks when it breaks up a player base. And this kind of customization, skins, things like that, is a great way of monetizing a game without affecting the game in any real way. And without bringing in a pay-to-win dynamic, yeah. like Call yeah. of Duty, you could argue, has done. And what's more, it actually works. I mean, look at Team Fortress 2. Valve have made a goddamn killing off selling cosmetics and small items. It works really well, and it's a damn sight fairer to the consumer than a season pass or day one DLC. Also this week, it turned out that Watch Dogs 2, another game that I reviewed pretty well, is the latest in the rapidly growing line of games to sell worse than sun cream in Wales. It, ra it rains a lot here. <laughs> joke, Can you t you look at, We're very look pale. how tasty we are. <laughs> pretty pale gaming. <laughs> According to Eurogamer, Ubisoft's latest open world hacking game sold just 80,000 copies in its launch week, compared with the original Watch Dogs which sold 380,000. It's a huge drop and continues what's now a pretty worrying trend for the AAA business. We've already done a whole video on this issue and whether or not it's a trend worth worrying about, so if you want more, click the link that's on your screen now or in the description below. Hey, uh, do you guys remember Homefront? Us neither. Well, Deep Silver, the guys who published this year's Homefront The Revolution, have said they should have waited before releasing the game. Speaking to industry insider website MCV, the company said the Far Cry-like open-world shooter was less of a success than hoped. Global brand and marketing director, there's a title, Paul Nichols, said, We've learned some big lessons from Homefront. He said the company has a better idea about what to do, not just with the quality of the product, but when it launches as well. He said the game's developer Dan Buster has really turned the game around and there's a huge difference in consumer sentiment towards the game now compared to when the game launched. Homefront was a bit of a stinker. It's got scores of 48, 49 and 54 for its various platforms on Metacritic and the game's general shittiness torpedoed any hope it had of being a sales success. It's great to hear that Dan Buster are working hard to try and turn this around, but god damn it, this is just another example of why games need to be f***ing finished before they go on sale. Also this week, the Steam Autumn sta <coughs> Stale. The Steam Autumn Stale. <laughs> oh, oh, Freudian slip there. <laughs> The Steam Ooh. sale getting stale. There are some excellent deals again, as you'd expect, as long as you're not used to buying games from grey market sites. I've already picked up the original Mass Effect, the original Dishonored, Total Annihilation and Command & Conquer 3 for just a few quid total. Some of the best deals as far as we can see are Doom for £13, Chivalry for £1.99, GTA 5 for £20, The Witcher 3 for £12.49 and Fallout 4 13 pound, what a deal, some good deals there. Yeah, it's pretty good this year to be fair. Time for the comments then, and this week a shitload of you have been watching and commenting on our video, why is no one playing COD? Lucas Matthews comments, these guys remind me of Yogi and Reggie from Far Cry 4, LMAO. I mean, uh, we're both guys and we both stand kind of shoulder to shoulder, yeah. looking towards the camera. Durell commented on the same video, the dude with the beard's head looks like a rhombus. <laughs> I, uh, this is so good. <laughs> Breakpoint Gaming said, These guys are going to break one mil one day, and I want to be there when it happens. Yeah. I want to be there when that happens. I want to be there when it happens. Mm -hmm. Sentinel S commented, These twats are very enjoyable. I, I, thank you. And also this week on the Dishonored 2 video, Why Yan Lin comments, Like your videos, subbed. What's your most respected game company? Minus CD Projekt Red and Don't Nod. I'm, I'm going to nail down Rockstar. I'm, 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 is that what you said? Yeah, I, I, it's got like it's got to be Rockstar or but also CD Projekt Red. I got to agree with you there, dude. CD Projekt are a great company, ethically like really good as well. You know, free DLC and stuff. They treat their customers, you know, with respect, which you know I love that. Lukman Rahaman commented on the pre-order bullshit update. I think this is the worst decade for the gaming industry, with companies taking us as fools. 
What's up with pre-orders and don't even get me started on early access BS? Yeah, it has been pretty rough. Um, I, whether it's the worst decade, I'm not sure. There was like a market crash in the 80s or I, I can't remember exactly what it was because I wasn't alive. But it was, it was you know, very early. There was a big crash. Six burn day, that was well alive. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you want to see more on the Watch Dogs 2 sales situation, just click the link right here. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.